Pappen takes the shot. Gordon has it. The game is over. Montreal wins the Stanley Cup. Everybody everywhere in the country talked about him the same way. Jean Beliveau has class. He was my first roommate with the Canadians. I was his last. He was 39, I was 23. I'd been called up to the team only a few weeks before the playoffs were about to begin. At the time, we stayed together as a team the whole postseason on the road in hotels, at home up north in the Laurentians. And he had been assigned by our coach Al McNeil and general manager Sam Pollock to keep an eye on the kid, something I didn't know. He'd already won the cup nine times. He got the room's double bid, I got the single. But I was also a teammate, so he wouldn't intrude on me unless necessary. He let me be and watched, and I watched him. If he could hold it together through our shocking ride to the cup that spring, what right had I not to? By this time, he was no longer a great star, but he was our captain, our leader. In his last days as a player, he was what he would remain the rest of his life, a great presence. Strange though it seems, it's easy now to understate his playing career. It's also easy to forget that the Canadians weren't always legendary. When Jean played his first full season in 1955, the team had won only seven Stanley Cups in its history. But in 1956, the Canadians would win the first of five straight championships, and in the 19 years that followed nine more, leaving every other team in our ice chips. With the rocket, the Canadians began their greatness. With Jean, we hit our dominant stride. Yet it was after he retired in 1971 that he became truly special. He became an ambassador for the team, but one like no other. He was proud of being a Montreal Canadian and proud of his sport. He was proud of being a Victoria Villois and a Montrealer, proud of being a Quebecer, proud of being a Canadian. He believed in all of them, and he represented all of them wherever he went. No place was too small or remote because no fan, no person was too unimportant. He was the great Jean Beliveau, tall, handsome, graceful and gracious, with his warm dignity and friendly smile, yet there he was. He treated everyone with such respect. He said the right things and in the right way, in French and in English, because that's what he believed and that's how he was. He made every occasion better. He made everyone who was there feel that their town, their organization, their province, their country, their event mattered, that they mattered. Appealing to their best selves, he reminded them of the best that was in them. It's how he had been as a player. Unlike many other great stars, his presence didn't diminish others. He made others better. He had other skills, he might have done other things, but he understood probably by early in his life that his greatest impact wouldn't be as corporate or political leader, but as Jean Beliveau, in doing what he did, in being who he was. A true all-time hockey great, an ambassador extraordinaire for all he believed in. Yet Jean's greatest achievement may have been that he was a very nice man.